How's it going everyone? It's Chow here. So due to the very, very interesting proposal of the snow day, there's the possibility and very likely probability that the S2S review sessions are actually going to get a little bit messed up. So because of schedule changes, I know people won't be able to make it potentially. So I'm just going to make this video just lecturing over everything that I was supposed to lecture over for the second review session. So I hope everyone uh, enjoys this section, I guess, if that counts. So before I keep before I like keep rambling, I'm just going to get started. So my thing that I was supposed to talk about was glycolysis. But before we talk about glycolysis, I guess we can talk a little bit more about glucose metabolism in general. So glucose metabolism is very, very cool because this here, the cellular respiration, for, uh, cellular respiration formula, yeah, that's something that should look a little bit familiar to you. But glucose, which is C6H12O6, when it reacts with oxygen, produces carbon dioxide, water, as well as free energy. Now, this free energy is very, very important because it can be coupled in ATP synthesis to make ATP, which is a very, very important molecule in our body. Uh, and of course, glucose metabolism itself and the cellular, re cellular respiration reaction is actually very, very favorable. So delta G naught is actually a very negative number. Negative? What does that mean? Well, if you've taken a chemistry course, you would know that it's downhill. And when you have something that goes downhill in its reaction, you'd know that it's very favorable and it gives off a lot of energy. But, you know, all that jazz and mathematics and chemistry aside, glucose itself is very important in many ways. A few of the ways uh, include making ATP. Uh, it can be stored as glycogen, uh, or, which eventually could also be converted to fat. Or, I guess, sorry, uh, it can be stored as glycogen or converted to fat. There you go. It's getting a little bit late. And also the carbons in glucose can be used in carbon compounds like amino acids, nucleotides, and finally glucose can produce heat. So lots of things that glucose can be turned into and, and be used for. So one of the things that we obviously talked about was this entire scary process of glucose metabolism starting off with glucose and going through this crazy crazy pathway until you reach the electron transport chain as well as the uh, ATP synthesis and ATP synthase. But the breakdown is you have a glucose that goes through glycolysis and from that glycolysis you make two ATP molecules, two NADH molecules, as well as two pyruvate molecules. Then those two pyruvate molecules will go through uh, and be attacked by pyruvate dehydrogenase, an enzyme, and it makes two NADH and two CO2. And the resulting important sort of molecule is acetyl-CoA. This acetyl-CoA is then taken into the Krebs cycle and it makes about two ATP, six NADH, two FADH2, and it also releases carbon dioxide. These NADH molecules are then going to be taken and actually utilized in a reaction with oxygen and that ultimately goes through the electron transport chain as well as the proton gradients and that's where the whole ATP synthase thing comes in and you can make ATP molecules. So pretty, pretty, pretty cool. But my section is mostly focused on glycolysis. So let's talk about glycolysis. Very, very strange and interesting steps in glycolysis. But before we talk about the steps of glycolysis, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, glycolysis itself as a reaction. And so glycolysis occurs in the cytosol, so in the cytoplasm over here. The citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondria, so that's something that separates the two reactions. Now glycolysis also generates no CO2 because it's anaerobic. It does, however, utilize 10 enzymes, which you don't need to know uh, all 10 of those enzymes. That would just be very, very crazy. 
Now, the outcome of glycolysis is very, very important because one glucose can give you two molecules of pyruvate, two ATP, as well as two NADH. So, lots of things that come out of glycolysis. So actually, let's go through the steps of glycolysis. This is something that Dr. Leckler used, and I thought it was actually very helpful. So I'm going to go through it step by step. So basically, you have your glucose molecule hanging out over here with all its OH bonds. And it also has a, a carbon double bound to an oxygen. But in the first step of glycolysis, an ATP molecule comes in, and it actually uh, attaches a in an inorganic phosphate molecule to one of the terminal uh, OH groups. So it knocks out the H and it attaches to the oxygen. Yeah, makes sense. And then in step two, what's really cool is that it then there has this sort of conversion in the sense that the carbonyl group over here in the original first carbon C1 moves to the carbon two C2 position. And we're going to see why that's important later on. So then what happens is you have another molecule of ATP that comes in. And actually it puts a, an inorganic phosphate molecule on the other O group. So uh, hydroxide group, or hydroxyl group over here, H leaves, and a P is actually attached to it. So that's the first three steps. From there, we get a little bit more complex, um, where at step four, there's this bond breakage. So the C3 carbon, C4 carbon, the bond between the C3 and C4 carbon gets broken. So the six carbon molecule now becomes a th two three carbon products. Of course, what's really important also is the fact that you have to do some intraconversion. So any products with the carbon uh, oxygen in the central region, so in a position like this, has to be changed to a position like this. So in order for glycolysis to continue, it has to be like this. Uh, you don't really need to know the details about this conversion, just know that it happens. So from there we move on to probably one of the more important steps of glycolysis, uh, and that is the energy yielding steps. So at step six, you actually have this instance where you create 2NADH. And then at step seven, you make two ATP molecules. So very, very, very interesting because ATP, NADH, that's actually energy. That's something that's be, that can be utilized in other reactions. So this is a, an energy yielding step and probably one of the more important steps in glycolysis. And then after step seven, that's when things get a little bit tricky. And at step uh, eight and nine, you're actually making two molecules of PEP. So the PEP actually is right here, phosphoryl, phosphenol pyruvate. Oh, I can't even pronounce that. So we'll just call it PEP here. And we create two PEP molecules. So notice the PEP molecule has the inorganic phosphate attached to it. But in step 10, you have an ADP molecule that comes in and it snatches away that PI group. So you can, uh, you can see that this PI leaves and there are some crazy things that happen, uh, which we really don't need to know about. Uh, and at the very end, you get two pyruvate molecules. So this is basically the steps of glycolysis. Here it is again in its full, full glory, thanks to uh, Professor Leckler. And here is sort of the uh, non-drawn out version uh, that's more, uh, I guess, a little bit neater. I don't know. I kind of like this a little bit more, actually, because it shows the, the steps individually. And it's very, very nice. And it, it's, it's a great process to see out um, on its own. But this is perhaps a little bit clearer to some of you. I think it gets a little bit crazy because it shows all these little groups over here um, and it can get a little confusing. But either way, try to get to know these steps, try to understand them, know how to replicate them. So if I give you a blank sheet of paper, 
be able to draw out the entire steps of glycolysis based on what I just discussed and what is shown on your screen. And then uh, the last thing before I leave that I want to just mention is the carbonyl position change that links step two and step four. So basically you see the situation where this carbonyl group actually moves from the carbon one to the carbon two position. So why does that happen? Well, the important thing is that it allows you to create two, three carbon molecules. So let's take a look at this. Well, if you have glucose, it's not possible because with glucose, at, with the carbonyl at the, uh, the first position, you get this cleavage where you'll end up with a two carbon molecule as well as a four carbon molecule. That's not good. You can't have glycolysis progress with that. Ugh. But with fructose, which is what's shown over here, you can see that with fructose and the carbonyl being in the C2 position, you can actually make that cut and make two, three carbon molecules. And that is very, very good because that's what glycolysis needs. So with that in mind, this is the reason why in that step, you can see the breakage. Uh, and that is because in step two, that transitioning of the carbon from the first position to the second position will allow for this cutting apart of the six carbon molecule into two, three carbon molecules. I'm just kind of rambling that now, but I hope, I hope it actually makes a little bit of sense based on the chemistry. So to tie things kind of all together, glycolysis ends with two ATP, two NADH, and two pyruvate molecules. These two pyruvate molecules will then be taken in with, uh, and, and there's this thing called pyruvate dehydrogenase that kind of attacks and you get some uh, things that are created there. And then finally, with that product, the two acetyl CoA, it goes into the Krebs cycle, which is something that is going to be discussed uh, by someone else. So I hope this is potentially useful. I, I, I don't know what I can actually do too much in regards to making this clear. Uh, I just basically read the slides and I, uh, this is pretty much what I was going to go over during the review session. So I hope some of you at least found it useful. I don't know if it's going to be super useful. Um, all I think that's very important is try to memorize this this slide over here, get to know what is actually going on, what's created, what's actually released, uh, where are some of these things going, for instance. And of course, very importantly, get to know the steps of glycolysis, be able to replicate it. And if you can do so without looking at your notes, and I just give you, again, give you a blank sheet of paper and you can write all these steps out, I think you'll be very, very much set for this section of the material. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, at least found it somewhat useful, and uh, I will see you folks later. And just as a final note, we do have office hours, and I will post the office hours here if I remember. And with that, bye, take care.